when I went to Vietnam during the war, I was very conscious of the fact that there were these rumors about what was happening to the children. So I, I went to many Catholic orphanages in Vietnam, and I was simply denied entry to all of them. Uh, and therefore, it fueled my paranoia that we were, in fact, being prevented from seeing the, uh, the effects of, of what uh, the dioxin in the Agent Orange did. When I went back to Vietnam in 1980, no problem. I found the kids, and I found many of them. I think I've been back to Vietnam 26 times since the end of the war. And there's hardly a village in Vietnam that does not have victims. And a few years ago, a colleague of mine discovered a uh, village which had the highest percentage of uh, malformed children of any village in Vietnam. So this was the sort of um, the worst, if you like. The book, amazingly enough, has on the cover, it's, it's a little bit hard to see, but it's, it's, it's this picture here, mm -hmm. um, which is a US Air Force map of the spraying runs. And uh, when I came across this, I couldn't believe it because this is a reservoir of which many people, that's how people got their drinking water. It's a reservoir, that's what it is. It's not a lake, it's a reservoir. And look at these spraying runs into the reservoir itself. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing the, the carefree way in which the Air Force just did their job, which was, you know, they, they, they'd come down here on a spraying run and they'd want to go home in time for chow. So they, they'd just dump what was left into the reservoir. So people were drinking the stuff. You know? it, it, there were something like 12% of the children born were seriously deformed. You know, I spent a lot of time in this village. Um, I mean, even this opening picture, which is a very simple picture of, of the rutted main street, there's a child being carried. And if you didn't know Vietnam very well, or if you didn't really pay attention, you realize this kid is much too old to be carried. He's, he's carried because he's got spina bifida and can't walk. Um, th th this girl here, um, they kept insisting she was brain dead. And um, uh, here she is with her doll. See, she looks very intelligent. She looked, and they said, uh, this, this is uh, her mother carrying her out. And they said, Philip, don't, don't get carried away. This girl, she doesn't even know you're here. She doesn't even know that you're human. She doesn't know anything. She's completely and utterly brain dead. There's no brain. And I said, I don't know. She keeps kind of, I feel, you know, I'm looking at her and she's looking at me. Forget about it. Anyway, on the last day when I was leaving, I was packing my camera bag and suddenly her hand went out onto mine. She just touched my hand and took it away. And you know, that's a moment I'll never forget, you know. and it, it is wide open for America to get involved, and this is an opportunity for them, you know, to do something positive about this problem, a problem which they can say in a very genuine way, hey guys, you know, we didn't drop this stuff to cause malformed babies, we dropped it to get rid of leaves. We had a problem, which we didn't know about at the time. But hey, you know what? We're going to do something about it now. And the cost is minuscule compared to the latest adventure in Iraq.